Hey you guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bass. And today we are back out in Tennessee. We're on Watts Bar Lake and we are going to go out and throw swing head jigs together. If you're not familiar with the technique, it's a combination of a swinging jig head, creature baits, and small paddle tail swim baits that's great for covering water and catching those early summertime bass. Now last year, about this same time, we were out in this part of the country, but we didn't get a chance to fish Watts Bar. This is my first day on the lake. I have never been here before. I know nothing about it, but I spent the morning looking at my electronics. There's some great offshore structure. So what we're going to do again is cover water. We're going to try and build a pattern. We're gonna go out along the river channel. We'll fish some slower tapering points. We'll fish some ledges, try to build a pattern together. And once we've got it, we'll repeat that pattern and hopefully catch some nice fish. I'm not sure how big a fish are even in Watts Bar, but I'll tell you what, this lake is beautiful. Let's see what happens. Literally the first cast. You gotta be kidding me. Nice smallie. Wow. That, that is the first cast of the day. We get that out of there. So awesome. This technique works, guys. So what I'm doing is I'm throwing a half ounce, and I'll link the exact here. This is a Z-Craw. I've also got a Kitek on with a bigger, heavier head, bigger hook. This one's a half ounce with a four-aught. That one's a five-eighths, I believe. It might even be a three-quarter, I'll look, with a five-aught. This is the Z-Craw. That's a crazy flapper, but I'm covering water. This thing's down bumping bottom. The head bumps bottom, and that creature is back there just kicking behind it, deflecting, bouncing, coming across that cover, and it works. Now with this technique, you only want to use as much weight as you have to. So I've got the boat sitting here. We're in 15 feet of water, and I'm throwing up into about eight or nine foot, and then working back down to 15. I'm using a half ounce because it helps me maintain bottom contact as I'm coming down the slope. If you're fishing shallower, I highly recommend that you go to a 3 8 ounce. You want to go to a lighter weight because the lighter the weight, the less often you'll get snagged and the better hook up to land ratio you have. The fish come up and try to jump, they have less weight that they're swinging around. Conversely, if your fish are deeper, especially if you're fishing downhill, going to a heavier head makes a huge, huge difference. That's why I've got a bigger creature on a heavier head laying there on the deck. What that does for you is really helps maintain good, hard bottom contact the entire time. Now, if I was sitting shallow throwing out and I'm coming uphill, you don't need as much weight because it's coming up, so it's naturally going to stay on the bottom. But like this, where I'm sitting deep throwing up, you really need that extra weight to help it hold the bottom as it's coming down that slope. It makes a big, big difference. And then swing head jigs, and I'll show you exactly what they are in a second, but a swing head jig, they come in all sorts of different hook arrangements. The primary one that we throw is the dirty jigs, and it's got a Gamakatsu super line hook, a stout hook, and that's what I'm throwing today because I didn't know what to expect here. I mean, that first bite was a smallmouth. I didn't know, I mean, I know that there are smallmouth, largemouth, I presume spotted bass, striper. This is the Tennessee River. So usually it has everything. 
I didn't know how big of a fish we were going to tangle with. So I always start with that super line hook. And if I'm largemouth fishing, I always stay with it. But particularly smallmouth guys or guys that are in parts of the country where the fish are a little bit smaller, you can go to some of the tungsten options. And the tungsten options typically come with lighter wire hooks. And I'll, again, link you all the gear. I'll link you my exact favorite tungsten head as well. Comes with a lighter wire hook. If you're not going to be catching giants, not specifically targeting them, that lighter wire hook will help that bait have more action because it's not weighting the bait down. So it works really, really well. You only want that super line hook if you're concerned about hooking a big bass and not wanting to get bent out, which is always our scenario, except when we go way up north and are specifically targeting smallmouth. I never want to get bent out by a great big bass. So I always start with that dirty head, with that super line hook, typically in a four odd. And I like to pair it up with that Z craw. That's a great place to start. Now, one thing about this lake, if you look out here behind me, it's vast. This lake is 70 something miles long. So how do you drop into a place like this and catch one on the first cast? Or how do you drop into a place like this and have confidence to even try a spot? Let me show you where I started, okay? What I've got here and I'm gonna turn the camera around so you can see in just a second. But what I've done is I've gone out to the mouth of the nearest bay to where I launched. I ran right out to the mouth of the bay and I got on the last point. It's early summer. These fish should be pulling out. Spawning should be over. It's 71 degrees. At the very least, the vast majority of fish should be done spawning. They should be pulling back out of the bays to go feed in open water and offshore structure. So I went to the very last point. That's where I started my search. Let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. Now you can see we ran right in here, turned the boat around and spot locked. And here we have sat, we're sitting in 15 feet. I'm throwing up on top here onto the ledge and coming back down. And that's where these fish are. It's really that simple. And because we've had two bites here, we're going to run across, we'll try the ledge on the other side, then we'll go repeat this some other places. We may already have our pattern for the day, which is amazing. Oh, missed him. Wow, he hit that hard. These are pretty big creature baits. And I'm thinking these are all similar size smallmouth. So they're short striking it. Man, he hit that hard. That felt like a smallie. He smashed it. Now I came into today really thinking largemouth. This is interesting. I wish I had brought the smaller, that was on a crazy flapper. And I'm throwing the big crazy flapper. Green pumpkin color. Green pumpkin's kind of my standard search color. If I know that I'm on fish and I want to catch a really big one in the summertime, I typically go to June bug. Don't ask me why, just experience. It has worked over and over. But if I'm searching, trying to find those fish, green pumpkin or green pumpkin watermelon, that's where I start. But again, that's the largest of the crazy flappers. If I knew what I was in for, I probably would have gone to a tungsten head, smaller hook, and the medium crazy flapper, and I think I'd be hooking way more fish. Or in the Z Croc, go down to the junior. I normally throw the standard, but uh, that's one of the downfalls of being all the way across the country. You can only bring so much gear with you. This is what I've got with me. I don't have smaller creatures, so we're just gonna keep trucking. All right, as we move to our next spot, you might be wondering why a swing head jig? Why did I pick that up today on a lake that I've never been to? Well, a swing head jig works year round. It's something that you can always do with a creature bait or with a swim bait. You know, guys will put a Kitec on here and crawl that thing through wood or cover or in the open. 
But the swing head jig to me, even though it's a year round deal, to me, it is a post spawn through the summer deal. It's interchangeable with that deeper paddle tail swim bait bite, the Kitek bite, Bastrix bite. It's interchangeable with that and it's interchangeable with the deep crank. If I'm on a 6XD or a 10XD or an Azuma or a DD22 bite, it's interchangeable with that as well. What I find is that the hookup to land ratio with the swing head jig is amazing. Once you've got them, you've typically got them. They're not coming off. That's part of it. The other part is that I tend to get a bigger bite. It just consistently gets a great quality of fish. So that's why we're out here on Watts Bar. I know that I can get bit on this style of bait because I'm, I mean, I'm just looking around. They'll eat a crankbait here. They'll eat a Kitek and they will eat a swing head jig. And I know if I put my time in with this, I might get a really big one. So that's why I started there. And with that, we're pulling up on our second spot. We're just across the bay from the first spot. All right, we got no bites on spot number two, but I'm seeing fish on the electronics. They're just sitting bellies in the mud. They're here, they're just not feeding. So I'm still confident in our pattern. Let's start running and gunning, trying to find somewhere else that we can do this same thing. That's no bass. Hey, buddy. Drum. <laughs> well, still felt good. He pulled hard. That one ate the crazy flapper. Let's keep going. Well, not the intended species again, but we'll take him. <laughs> nice catfish. These things are like the catch-all out here. So I'm gonna have to grab another bait, but let me quickly show you the concept here. So it's a football head like a football head jig, but it's a football head with an EWG style hook and it is free swinging on there. It'll just flop around. When we go to rig a creature bait, we Texas rig it, go down, pop out the side. This one's already blown. I'm gonna do it upside down just so you get the concept, but through there, now this time I'm gonna pop out the head, come up, flip it over, pop it through. And normally if you were Texas rigging, you skin hook, you tex pose. For this technique, I actually like to leave that hook point exposed. That helps my hookup ratio. But that is the concept. And you just swim that along the bottom, almost like a spinnerbait and a crankbait. And those fish just come up and eat it. Catfish, drum, smallmouth, everything seems to eat it. You know, it's interesting. The only thing we haven't bumped into today is a large mouth. We may go shallow in a little while, try and get one of them too if they don't show up. Perhaps they're a little bit farther behind these other fish, but for now, I'm gonna grab a fresh bait, re-rig this, and we'll keep going. Oh, lost him. This 
So we seem to have found the sweet spot. We're sitting in 15 to 16, throwing up in eight to 10. This is now the third spot where the fish have consistently been sitting in 12 to 15. So I'm sitting deeper, throwing shallower, and then midway through my cast, I'm getting the bite. And this is the third location where the fish have been in that 12 to 15 range. So we definitely have a pattern. Now what I don't know is if I need to stay out here on points like what we're doing right now. We've gone out, we've tried deep ledges. I never got a bite, that's why you didn't watch any of that. I'm back up on a spot that's identical to where we started and immediately I'm getting bit again. But maybe we could go up really shallow and find some largemouth because even though these fish are here in 12 to 15, there's always a group of fish that goes really, really shallow. If there's grass, they're in the grass. If there's laydowns, they're in the laydowns. If there's docks, they're up there in that shade. So perhaps as soon as we get done with this point, we could go back in the back of this pocket. I don't know if this pocket's any better than any other, but we'll tuck back in here. I can see, I don't know, eight or 10 docks back there. We'll shoot this up around some docks. See if we can find some fish up there too. Maybe that's where the largemouth are hiding out. And that's why we're running into all these other species out here on the outer stuff. What I wouldn't do for a smaller creature bait right now. So many bites from fish that can't quite choke this thing. And this is a full size bait. I don't know anything about this lake, but it's certainly looking like a half size bait. Throwing the juniors in all these baits would smash them. <laughs> he balled it right up. He had a hold of it. Nice fish. That's who we were here looking for. That Z craw. Awesome. Come here, bud. <laughs> oh man, that's too much fun. I just can't even describe the feeling of being so far from home on a new lake and just catching fish. There's so much confidence when you've got a handful of techniques that you know work. And then it doesn't matter where you are. You drop in and you start building that pattern. I mean, how many times do we say that in these videos? Build a pattern and repeat. This place, again, it's 70 plus miles long. There are fish everywhere. And I'm sure there are vast miles and miles of water that are really poor fishing. That's just part of a place this big. But you don't have to worry about any of that. If you build confidence in some techniques, hone your skills, and then go out there and apply them where they should work as if you were on your own home lake. Or if you are on your own home lake, do the same thing. And pretty soon you won't be going out there wondering where the fish are. You'll be going out there with confidence and catching fish consistently. All right, let's see if we can get another one. Too cool. 
That one was way out here on an outside edge, but same thing, 12 feet deep. It tore up that Kitek creature. Well guys, I think we'll end it on that one. I've got a couple more tips for you. I told, we were told you we were gonna go up shallow, but a boat went ahead of me into the pocket, so I don't wanna do that. We'll just leave it behind. We didn't even get around to that shallow stuff or throwing it with Kitex or paddle tails. So down in the video description, I will link uh, my favorite creature baits, not just the two that I was throwing. Now these are my favorite two. That's why those are the two that I packed for a trip across the country. Uh, but I have a couple others that I really like. Uh, and then as well with the, the paddle tail swim baits. Uh, but the biggest tip that I wanna give you, today I was fishing this on braid to leader. I actually prefer to, for this one technique, because almost everything I do, I still prefer braid to leader, but this one technique, did you notice how many short strikes we got today? Fish that just walloped that thing and were gone. Uh, there were a lot. Part of that is because there's something about this technique where they run up and grab it and then suck it in. It's like a two part thing. It's not like a crankbait where they just wolf it. Because of that, I like to fish fluorocarbon. 15 to 20 pound fluoro lets that extra little that extra little moment i mean it's nothing but it's just enough that they can vacuum it up before i load up on them and i actually find that for this technique where i'm on a tight line the entire time just slow rolling i have a better hookup to land ratio with fluoro than i do braid to leader but again when we're out here on the road I'm using rods that I can do a lot of different things with. So I'm not necessarily perfectly dialed for the technique of the day, but the gear did a great job. We caught some nice fish. We got to check out Watts Bar, which was a really fun lake. Uh, turns out there's all kind of species in here. That was a riot. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll talk to you soon.